old Alabama gardener, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of my, my different garden plots. Now first I'm going to look at the green beans. As you have seen me making videos on, I've been canning green beans from these two rows right here on most of the summer. I've canned 135 pints of green beans. And now it's time to let these green beans grow on up and begin to reach the stage of maturity, what we call shell out beans. Now this variety is called rattlesnake pole beans. And I really think that it gets its name from that marking as you see that bean right there with the purple uh, stripe marks on it. Now here's a bean that the outer skin is turning yellow and it's also kind of getting leathery and soft. I'm going to shell it open for you so you can see what it looks like when we call it being at the shell out stage. Now you notice that the beans inside they're fully plump they're almost a little bit of a gray looking color with white specks on them. So that means that they're mature. They're ready to uh, go into the uh, shell out stage. Let's say you wanted to can them this way. You could shell these out and can them as shell out beans. The hull, of course, is far and away too tough. You'd throw that away. But they are not yet at the stage of being dry enough to harvest for saving seed for next year. Now you may remember I had some garlic growing here. So I've left one uh, plant to produce this flower head. I'm gonna let it go all the way to making seed and then we'll see what we can do with the uh, garlic seeds. Now this next row is a, uh, a row of volunteer. In other words, they came up from seed by themselves of uh, uh, sweet 100 cherry tomatoes. And actually they're just now starting to uh, produce. Now let's look at the row of cucumbers. This is a variety called Progress. It is one of the Japanese varieties. Uh, it can get pretty large and still be tender. And then so you'll see quite a that there are some in here that are pretty large, but they're still very good to eat. And uh, it's doing quite well, produce a lot of cucumbers. Now let's go look at another row of cherry tomatoes. These are called Sweetie. Uh, I bought a seed pack for off of a rack at the store, planted the seeds, and then eventually set the plants in here. Uh, they're very good. You can see they're loaded up really heavy, uh, ripening and producing more tomatoes than we will eat. And not only that, but the big tomatoes are coming in now. But these are good, and they grow really, really well. Next, let's look at the eggplant. Now, this is a Japanese-type eggplant. It's called Ichiban. It gets long and uh, gets about an inch, an inch and a quarter in diameter. We like this one because it's actually milder in flavor uh, than the big round, what I refer to as the Italian eggplant. Now here's a row, I, I should say a row, it's actually five plants of a uh, California Wonder green bell pepper. So I ordered these seeds Started these seeds from seed back in uh, March or early April. Transplanted the plants out here. And uh, you can see as I open up the vines there, there's some nice green peppers in there. And they are the sweetest, best green peppers I have ever, ever grown. Now the house is located up here on the hill and basically in the woods as you see right here. So the big gardens are further out away from the woods 
Now you can see one of the gardens that I'm pointing to out there. Actually, that telephone pole, uh, that's a marker there. So that's out where we're going. Food that we come to out here is a patch. They've kind of grown up, but it is a patch of thornless uh, blackberries. And of course, they get large uh, and they're real sweet. Uh, the seeds in them are quite large, but they're real juicy, really a good berry. So this is one of three big gardens. And the first thing we're looking at over there is my row of yellow crookneck heirloom squash. Now I know a lot of you have problems with the squash vine borer and with stink bugs on the squash. So I'll try to get in uh, to inside these squash vines here and show you what's going on in there. Now what I'm looking to show you is do you see any stink bug down in there. You know, usually around squash, you see a lot of stink bugs. I don't see any. Yep, it's thundering. No stink bugs. If there were stink bugs in there, and I do this, they would be moving and coming around. You could see them crawling, getting out of the way. Nothing in there. Here we have nice, tender squash. Now over here, other side of the squash, I've got two rows of pinto beans. Uh, these rows are about 65 feet long. So when those two rows come on, they're gonna produce a lot of good pinto beans for us. Now let's go over and look at our two rows of uh, tomatoes. This is a variety called Better Boy. It's actually one of the better varieties I think that you can grow. They load up good. They have a good flavor. They're pretty disease resistant. So as you see uh, in this particular shot right here, I have a pretty good load of tomatoes in there. And there is no blossom end rot on these tomatoes. And I have not yet found a single, not even one, horn, uh, tomato hornworm. Now what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna try to do, come on rain. <laughs> what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to count the tomatoes on this vine. So let's get in. So down in here, we got one, two, four ripe ones. Over here, we've got four, that's eight. Up here, we've got four more, so that's 12. Here we got three, that's 15. Here we got two, that's 17. Over here, we got two, that's 19. And here we've got four, so that's 21. Uh, over here, we've got two, so that's 23. Right there, we've got three, so that's 25. Over here, we've got two more there, that's, oh, we've got three, so that's 28. There's three more, that's 31. Now, let's come up higher. 31, now up here's two, so that's 33. Over here's two, that's 35. All right, so we got 35 ripe and green tomatoes on this plant. And up here in the top, up here in the top is still blooming. And it's important, these plants have not been sprayed 
with anything, not even one spray. There's some blooms right in there. There's some more blooms there. Some blooms way over there. So I don't know how you could ask more from a tomato plant than it has 35 tomatoes coming on it. So what's my point? My point is for a tomato plant to produce this heavy and you also notice there's no blossom end rot. Nothing going on in there bad, okay? Now you might say, well, what about that right there? Well, that's just natural, normal death of a, of a leaf of the tomato plant. That's, that's okay, that's not a problem. So, what's the point of this, okay? You got to feed that tomato plant down there at the roots and you got to feed it well and you got to feed it heavy to have it produce that kind of fruit. And of course, this is what you're looking for, ripe tomatoes. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's six tomatoes in that cluster. So we got this row over here, and we got this row over here coming. Now we'll go over here and look at my wife's vegetables. This is called bitter melon. You can see them down through there. Hanging down, getting bigger. Here's a nice one, ready to ready to pick. There's a really a nice one there, ready to pick. There's a really beautiful one there. And there's a lot of beautiful ones down through there. Now let's go over to one of the other big garden plots. And over the first one we come to over here is four rows of kidney, dark red kidney beans. Uh, they're not quite ready to harvest, but they're probably, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks away. And there they are. Well, quite a ways yet from ready, but look at that, that plant's still blooming. Now here we have some beans where the outer skin is beginning to turn yellow. So let me pick one, show you what it looks like on the inside. Show you what these red, dark red kidney beans look like when they're getting ready. This here is a row of okra that's just actually recently been set here. <coughs> this is a row of green bell pepper. Everything is struggling because of the heat. This is another row of okra. I put these wire cages on so I can keep the deer from eating the leaves off of the okra stalks. And yes, I need to get in here and get the grass out from around these okra plants, but I'll get to it. Now I'm going to show you a plant that comes up wild and, uh, and I can eat it. I can just harvest it while I'm out here messing around in the garden. And it's just plain old wild blackberries. Now these are not thornless. They, these will grab your clothes and grab your skin. Uh, they're not very big, but if you get them when they're really, really ripe, they're nice and sweet. Makes a good blackberry cobbler. Now we're heading out to the third big garden plot. And I'm gonna show you three rows of black eyed peas. And over here, we've got three rows. One here, one over here a little ways, and another one over there. Oh, black eyed peas. 
And you get down here close. You can see they're coming out of the ground. Now let's go up this way. If I wanted poke salad, there's a bunch growing here, some over there, some over there. Let's get in here. This is an oriental pear. And we'll wind it up with our beehive and they did not survive. So I'm not going to fool with trying to grow raised bees anymore. I got one more tree to show you. That's right down here. This is a Japanese persimmon. I say you see the persimmons in there. There's two there, there's two more up there, one over there, one here, some down here. Look how nice and cool it looks up there to where the house is, so let's get up there. <laughs> 